What's going on everybody? Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at three very different types of 3D printers. All three companies have taken a completely different way to make 3D printing happen for us, except with the, with the one uh, caveat that all three of them can print in about a 300 by 300 by 300 print area. Some are a little bit taller, some are a little bit shorter, but we'll get into the details of each one of those when we go back there and take a look. So uh, some of the main things that I want to cover are just to give you an idea of, of which direction to go to if you guys are hunting around for a 3D printer nowadays, because I do believe all three have their strengths and weaknesses, and all three definitely have their place in the market. All right, with that said, let's hop over behind me to the first machine, the Creality K1 Max. All right, let's go. All right, so this is the Creality K1 Max, and this is my example of a decent Core XY machine, specifically a 300 by 300 by 300 Core XY machine, which at the moment is actually rare. Majority of the machines, unless you're going custom, are underneath this size, kind of like this. This is the Creality K1C. It is also a Core XY machine, but I wanted to put it here because this is a more traditional 220 by 220 by 250 sized machine, and as you can see, this 300 by 300 machine isn't that much larger. So I wanted to give a kudos to this machine for being so compact and nicely designed. And that is actually one of the strengths of the Core XY uh, type of machine. Let me try to explain. So basically on these machines, they come with almost a square frame, which means they are automatically easier to enclose. That's why a lot of them you see with doors like this, this one having glass doors on the top and bottom, plexi on the sides. But essentially there's two motors with a somewhat complex belt path uh, that's at the top here. And those two motors sling this tool head that goes back and forward, left and right. And because the tool head itself doesn't need to move up and down on the Z axis that is taken care of our uh, by our build plate here that moves up and down, that tool head with two motors can move very quickly, and especially because it is stationary up there. Obviously uh, with clipper firmware that really takes advantage of that movement style means that Core XY machines of this style, and there's definitely different styles of Core XY machines, can print very quickly. This particular one, the, the K1 Max, has other benefits like LiDAR systems, automatic uh, Z offset uh, leveling, obviously it has a uh, AI camera on it. So tons of features are packed into this machine. So those type of things are definitely huge advancements in 3D printing tech, and especially the reasons why this type of machine is currently extremely popular. With that obviously comes some downsides. One is with so many features and so many things packed into a machine like this comes the price. Uh, this particular machine in this size is between $800 and $1,000, depending on, on if things are on sale or not. So it is a relatively expensive machine uh, for what it is uh, at the end of the day. And because of the mechanics and just the way that it works, there is a ton of parts in here. But with this particular machine, I've had this one since launch, and I just recently did a project on this that I've uh, put 18 spools of filament through this particular machine, and it is still going strong, but it is complicated. So if something does go wrong, like a belt snaps or just something isn't quite right in that machine, like for example, the rods wear away or something along those lines, working on a Core XY machine is going to be far more complicated and far more costly than working on a more traditional machine. It's just the nature of the beast. So definitely keep that in mind. It is a very exciting technology. It's definitely pushing all of this forward. Um, and it just, it's, it's a phenomenal machine, but it definitely has its downsides as well. One of the major ones is cost and complexity. All right, so with that note, let's go ahead to the next and pretty much the most op more opposite uh, machine of this, the Artillery X4 Plus. All right, let's head down there. All right, so what we have here is a much more traditional Cartesian style machine that is a, definitely a tried and true, uh, at least looks wise machine. And this we call a bed slinger. The reason why we call these things bed slingers is the Y axis where the bed is on. It slings forward and backward and it just so happens that that's where the print is. So you're actually slinging the entire print 
as it goes. However, because of that, it is also very simple. There is a single motor pulling this bed uh, forward and backward. There is a single motor uh, pulling this uh, hot end left and right. And then uh, there is two motors pulling the entire uh, hot end upward as the print is made on the print bed. So because of the fact that the print is on uh, the bed that is moving, uh, these machines tend to have slightly more quality uh, related issues just because the whole bed is moving. So it is a little tiny bit harder to tune these machines to go as fast as Core XY machines. And that's another reason why Core XY machines are becoming more and more popular. However, the upside is just how simple these machines are there's significantly less components to these things which means the price is half for example this one specifically even though it has a ton of features similar to that machine running clipper for example PI sheet a lot of automation is around $430 so quite literally half the cost less than half the cost in some cases than the core XY machine and still has a 300 by 300 build plate and actually goes all the way up to 400 on the Z on this machine just keep in mind if you are going to be printing that tall the whole bed has to move with the prints so if you are making making tall prints you might need to go slower uh, just to get uh, the quality to be about the same because of just the nature of how these machines work now with that said some of the fastest machines out right now uh, printing benchies are Cartesian machines so you just have to take your time and know its strengths know its weaknesses use it to your advantage and that was like I said why these machines are not only so popular popular, but also why they are so inexpensive. Tried and true always seems to work. All right, so that's Cartesian. Let's move on to Delta. All right, so this tall boy is the V400 by FL Sun, and this is a Delta machine. The way Deltas work is the print bed is actually round because of the mechanics of the way that the tool head uh, ends up moving at the bottom. You do lose some space in the corners, but you're still getting a 300 by 300 by 410 build area, so a massive build area. And because of the way the Deltas work, is it actually needs about the same amount of space as build area on top. So as you can see, just how much space, at least vertically, this thing takes up. That's kind of its big negative. However, uh, it's mu much like the Cartesian machines, this is actually a really simple machine in terms of parts. There isn't that many parts to this machine in comparison to a Core XY. The way that it works is there's three motors uh, in these arms. There's pulleys with, uh, uh, with belts running uh, on the inside of these extrusions. And all they do is move these arms. And when they move together, it's almost like a robotic arm uh, that's moving uh, in whichever direction it needs to to make a print happen. One of the major benefits of that is that the bed is completely stationary. It does not move at all. Uh, which makes for a really good print quality and also because the tool heads are pretty light it makes for really fast printing so I would say this is an equivalent to core XY speeds and accuracy uh, in a different package it's extremely fun to watch because like I said it's kind of like a robot building something uh, from the bottom up here but you got to know about its major weakness and that's the amount of space that you need so although the core XY machines are just square the outside dimensions are the outside dimensions everything is inside Cartesian machines take up a lot more space. The bed moves to and from. It actually goes past the front and past the back. There's wires coming off the bed. They're actually harder to fit in your space, especially if it's that large of a 300 by 300 uh, plus machine. And then this being a 300 by 300 machine, it actually takes up the least amount of space on the bottom. However, vertically, uh, you can't tell because I think it's off the shot, but this thing is almost touching uh, my ceiling here. So they are hard to find the space for. Uh, because this is kind of different but yet still simple the price for this particular machine at least at the moment is $700 I do think that the price on these is gonna go a little bit lower because FL Sun has some new machines coming out soon one of the other huge benefits of this type of machine is you can enclose this rather easily as well and they do have kits uh, for this machine which I plan on getting to enclose uh, this so it'll let you print other materials as well whereas a Cartesian machine much harder to enclose because the electronics are in the machine as 
well. So when you're enclosing a Cartesian machine, you're also enclosing the electronics. So you're gonna have to do all sorts of modifications to make sure that that doesn't overheat. So we got faster print spe speed because the bed is motion. Uh, it, it doesn't have any motion. It still has simple mechanics in terms of just how many things are moving. There's literally only three motors in this machine. So that is Delta and that's why Deltas are super cool. All right, now that we've gone over all three types of machines, let's head back to the desk. See you over there. As a little bonus here, while we're getting back to the desk, we have here Creality's take on what was originally done by the Voron switch wire, and that is Core XZ. And what this means is just like the Core XY machine where two motors control a series of belts that move the tool head uh, in uh, this uh, motion, it tilts that 90 degrees and we get that same motion here. So this particular machine uh, still slings the bed on the bottom. However, this Core uh, XZ motion eliminates the needs uh, for uh, lead screws on the Z, which means everything is belt driven, which means that, that motion should theoretically be much smoother. So definitely another very interesting take on a machine. Is that, and as you can see, it is also very compact on the table. This particular machine is definitely of the smaller type. However, I have reason to believe that there's going to be a 300 by 300 version of this coming out at some point and at that point we'll cover it and add it to this list so that's a little bonus for you One other thing I wanted to do is go over the prints from these machines, just so you guys can see what I meant in some of the things that we discussed back there. What I tried to do was set up the prints in exactly the same way with very similar, if not the same models. Obviously there's some deviation here. I kept the filament from the same manufacturer, 3D Max as always. This is PLA plus. It is not the hyper PLA or anything like that. This is just standard PLA on all three machines. The other thing I did was I kept the slicers uh, slicer settings as close as I possibly could. However, I let the machines do what they're supposed to do from their native slicer. So the main changes I made was I made uh, everything two walls and uh, down to 10 uh, infill on whichever uh, infill that they had from the factory. So with very little input for me, I just wanted to have a similar test uh, based on roughly the shapes and types of things that people typically print on these machines. So the red uh, filament over here, this was all printed on the K1 Max. And as you can see, it is looking pretty good. Then we have the blue filament, which was done on the Artillery X4 Plus. I would say that if, if I was to really nitpick everything, this is maybe slightly uh, lower quality than the other two. However, this can totally hold its own. Uh, and for the price uh, difference between all of these machines, I would say that this is definitely negligible. All right, and finally, we have the green filament uh, with the V400. So as you can see here, the quality in general, if I didn't tell you where these models came from, I don't think it would be really possible to know which printer printed what. And that is kind of the point of this video. I think nowadays, in, today, in today's 3D printing, you can pick literally any type of machine and enjoy it to its fullest and print some incredible things. Some of the stuff that you see on display here and some of the stuff that I'm most proud of in 3D printing was printed on some really, really budget machines. So you don't always have to buy the latest and greatest, but there sure is some really, really fun stuff coming out nowadays, isn't there? So what do you guys think? Now that we've gone over all these different types of machines, do you guys stick to the tried and true? Do you go with the brand new, the most popular Core XY? Do you go with something funky like Delta or maybe one of these new Creality Core XZ machines? There's a lot going on in 3D printing. I'm loving every single one of them. Hopefully something here has intrigued you to look uh, into something that maybe you don't previously have, or maybe sparks a conversation down in the comments. I'm always down to have a conversation, no matter what it ends up being. So definitely let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are, maybe what your favorite machine and what different type of style that you guys like best. Have you only had bed slingers? Have, maybe you've only had Core XY machines. Uh, or maybe you've only stuck to Delta, who knows? Or maybe you're crazy like me and have all three. Hey, maybe you just avoid FDM altogether and just stick to resin, which is a whole nother thing. 
All right, guys, as always, there's going to be links down in the description. If you guys want to support the channel, please use those affiliate links. They help me out, uh, but they don't cost you anything. They're just there for me to help you guide, guide along to certain products as long as you're interested in them, as well as check out shop at 3dprintsos.com where you can get all sorts of cool merch like this mug, the mat you might have seen earlier, some shirts, all sorts of fun stuff on there, as well as our communities over at Patreon and our free Discord. Uh, always love to see everyone in there and I appreciate all of your support uh, on all of those platforms. Thank you all very much. All right, and with that, I'll see you guys in the comments. Later.